Harsha Walia is the executive director of the BC Civil Liberties Association. She joins me from Vancouver to discuss the response from the head of the RCMP Civilian Review and Complaints Commission today. Uh, Ms. Walia, first of all, thanks for taking time to join uh, with me today and to have this discussion. I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Can I start by asking you, with the groups you joined with in this action, what was the reaction today uh, at your news conference uh, to the offer from the RCMP to leave that temporary detachment set up along the access road in uh, Wet'suwet'en territory as long as the service road remains open? Uh, what was the feeling about that offer? Yeah, what I can say is the Wet'suwet'en spokespeople who spoke to that, their concern was certainly that this uh, is happening without conversation with the hereditary chiefs. And also that the RCMP are still maintaining a detachment, they're moving locations, but that uh, CIRG, the response team, is continuing to maintain a presence on the territory. So I think uh, they're still waiting for a full withdrawal, they're waiting for conversations to happen in a good way, uh, and that's that's been their response. So that it's not, uh, they're moving off this temporary uh, detachment, or that's the offer about their uh, setting up in Houston, uh, which is still on right. Wet'suwet'en territory, right? That's right, and presumably they're setting up a detachment to continue their policing operations, so they're not actually uh, closing down their policing operations on the territory. Okay, um, so uh, let's see where that uh, story ends up going, but um, let me ask you about the reasons you asked the Complaints Commission to launch a public investigation. Let's start there. What are you alleging about the actions of the RCMP on the Wet'suwet'en territory? Yeah, so what we've seen with the RCMP since uh, the second week of January and what we uh, issued a complaint about, we issued two complaints. One is an urgent update, uh, and our complaint included eight testimonies from people in Wet'suwet'en territory, including media, uh, including legal counsel, and including Wet'suwet'en people and their invited guests. And what we saw was a, a range of issues emerge, particularly with respect to the exclusion zone on the Morris uh, River Road, on the Morris Forest Service Road, rather, sorry, uh, including a denial of access and a restriction on people's movement. Uh, we saw restrictions on media. Uh, we saw an exclusion zone that did not actually correlate with the injunction. And so all of these taken together are serious concerns where that they infringe on people's charter protected rights, mm -hmm. uh, which is a serious infringement. Uh, it's an infringement on Wet'suwet'en people's ability to move on their territory. Uh, we saw restrictions on uh, press and we know freedom of the press is a very highly protected uh, charter right and, and our charter. And so, you know, taken together, we saw the RCMP as instituting an unjustified and overbroad policing power in Wet'suwet'en. Okay, uh, so, so that was the basis of our complaint. Okay, and so you take this complaint, you, you ask the uh, Civilian Complaints Commission to in, uh, launch a public investigation. Uh, the head of the commission uh, sent you a letter saying that uh, she's refusing to, to open an investigation, but not because she didn't think the concerns were serious, but because she's already reported on similar allegations against the Mounties in, in New Brunswick. So uh, what, and you've seen some of the, uh, the, the recommendations that she's put forward and some of the findings she's made. Uh, what, what, did you, what do you draw from those and how they relate to what you say has been happening with suit and territory? Yeah, absolutely. And I should say that she leaves it open whether she will uh, call a public investigation right. at any given time. Uh, but I think this letter is really, it's quite unprecedented and it's shocking because we got it back so quickly. Uh, and I think what the chairperson has made clear in, in her letter is, is that, you know, these are issues that have already been raised with the RCMP with respect to uh, an issue that came up in McMaggie Territory in New Brunswick in, in 2013. So this is seven years ago. And that seven years later, the RCMP are, uh, you know, have, in our opinion, uh, clearly have not learned uh, from the recommendations that were presented to them in the interim report. The chairperson also makes clear that the RCMP commissioner has been uh, sitting on this report since last year, that the commissioner is waiting, the chairperson is waiting for the response from the RCMP commissioner. So I think that should be troubling really to all Canadians that the RCMP uh, has a series of recommendations and findings that no, no one knows about and that this has not yet been made public. Uh, because it's an interim report and it's awaiting a response from the RCMP commissioner. Um, and many of the issues that are raised in that interim report are, are starkly similar. So the issue of an exclusion zone uh, needing to be defined, that there's not an arbitrary power given to the RCMP to have an undefined exclusion zone, uh, that restrictions on the media are unreasonable. Uh, this is, of course, a charter protected right. Uh, that um, having stop checks of vehicles and requiring people to provide their identification, uh, to search vehicles and passengers, that these are all not justifiable under the law. Mm -hmm. uh, so very 
similar series of issues have emerged. Uh, the commissioner also makes clear that you know uh, policing operations, particularly when it comes to Indigenous communities, is something that needs to be taken very seriously, uh, given the history of Crown RCMP relations and also what it means in an era of reconciliation. So I think for all of these reasons, you know, this is an incredibly powerful letter to, to get. And even though the, the commissioner and the chairperson is not initiating a public interest investigation, uh, what we glean from it is that uh, the commissioner is saying, you know, we don't want you to have to wait uh, another, uh, you know, the length of time that other people have had to wait and that these issues are, are pertinent, they're of significant public interest. And so it's really quite unprecedented that the chairperson released the summary findings to the public, despite the fact that that has not yet been made public as a report yet, because right. it is of significant public interest. And and are you okay with the 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 explanation that um, I don't want to for now launch another public investigation into what's happened with the RCMP in in Wet'suwet'en territory, till I hear back from them, till they respond to this other report? Uh, part of me wonders, well, why not run another investigation that? would reinforce the findings, if that's the case, of the previous report and sort of, uh, you know, sort of double up on that evidence if it's there to, to question the actions of the Mounties. Why not have another, uh, another investigation, even while you're waiting for the Mounties to respond? Yeah, I mean, that's certainly a question that the chairperson can answer. Um, I take from it that they don't think that the length of time that that will require is really what people are needing. Uh, I think the chairperson recognizes in their letter that the the amount of detailed investigation and the, t the process that that will potentially lead to, including maybe the RCMP sitting on another interim report, uh, does not serve anyone's best interests. All right. So what happens now, do you think? What's, what's the lesson from, uh, even though there's no public investigation, is there enough in this, you think, to uh, send a clear message to the RCMP and to the, the, the public about um, how, how the force might be doing its job? I think absolutely. You know, I think there's been a lot of conversation about the rule of law in recent weeks. And I think, you know, this is a very clear example that the RCMP operations are themselves an affront to the rule of law. The RCMP are charged with upholding the Constitution. They're charged with upholding, uh, you know, our people's basic civil liberties and their human rights to ensure that their policing operations do not violate people's liberty interests, that they don't violate people's charter protected rights. Uh, and I think we have ample evidence uh, that the similarities with what happened in 2013 that the commission has pointed to and what's happening today in Wet'suwet'en territory are very similar and that the RCMP has already received this guidance. They've already received these findings and recommendations from the CRCC. They've had this report for one year. Uh, and yet they're continuing to maintain these kinds of policing operations, many of which are clearly unlawful. Um, and so I think the RCMP really uh, need to need to demonstrate how they can possibly justify this. Uh, there's many examples of this. One of them, of course, is the RCMP have said that they are simply enforcing an injunction. Um, but we know that the exclusion zone is actually outside of the injunction zone. And that is one of the things as well that the CRCC chairperson pointed to, that the RCMP need to be educated about the parameters of, a, of enforcing an injunction. And so I think there's uh, many reasons that we can look to to be skeptical of the RCMP's policing operations in Wet'suwet'en territory, including just the excessive use of force that we're seeing. Um, and also the okay. RCMP have said the exclusion zone has come down, but we've heard multiple reports that people are continuing to be stop checked in their vehicles, which is one of the clearest um, abrogations of law and charter rights that the CRCC chairperson pointed to in her, in her letter. All right, uh, Harsha Walia, uh, Executive Director of the BC Liberties, uh, Civil Liberties Association. Thank you for your time today. It's good to speak with you. Thank you for having me.